Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and we're gonna uh, quickly go into today's video, which is a really, really cool thing that someone asked there in the comments. Dr. Manhattan, one of our uh, top fans here in the channel, he was asking, what's the process to bring your character from ZBrush into Arnold without having to do UVs and textures and everything? You can just poly paint him and bring him into ZBrush. And there is a way, so I'm gonna show you. Uh, this is a character I did a couple of uh, years ago for a demonstration. I'm not sure if I've shown this before here on the channel, but we're going to be using this as an example. Now, I'm not going to be doing a super complicated, um, let's call it a poly paint job. Uh, we'll, we'll maybe talk about that. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do some sort of like skin texturing with poly paint. I'm just going to do a quick, uh, quick work here. So uh, first things I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the basic material. I'm going to select white and I'm going to go up here to RGB to fill everything with RGB. We're going to go color and fill object. There we go. Now, this object right here, the character itself is completely filled with a white layer. Now I'm going to go for a like nice color. I'm going to go for this sort of like pale red color right there. I'm going to say color, fill object. Oh, not fill layer, fill object. Got to jump back there. There we go. There we go. So color, fill object. And the way polypaint works, if you guys have used a ZBrush before, is you can uh, pretty much paint each specific or individual vertex. The more geometry you have, the more uh, resolution your polypaint is going to have. If this is the first time you're hearing about polypaint and you want to check some like ZBrush tutorials, we do have a very special bundle that I think you guys might like. Hey guys, we have some great news for you. We know how important it is to prepare yourself and keep learning amazing skills to improve your portfolio. And that is why we're offering a super epic bundle of our best 50 courses for you. This epic bundle is available through ArtStation. It contains all of the videos and project files for our top 50 courses. We have modeling, sculpting, rendering, rigging, animation, Maya, characters, creatures, props, substance painters, ZBrush, and Real Engine. All of the topics that we've been covering in the past years are going to be there. Our top 50 courses are going to be included in this bundle. This bundle is at a super price with an amazing 80% discount. And we will have this bundle available throughout the January. So, if you are wanting or you want to have some very nice new year resolutions, if you want to increase your 3D levels and you want to become a master at the 3D art, then this is your opportunity. Make sure to check the link down below. Very well. So now that we have this base red layer, I can go to the standard brush and I like to change my standard brush to a color spray and change the alpha to alpha 23. This uh, pretty much looks like an airbrush and if you turn off RGV, uh, sorry, if you turn off C add and you just leave RGV on, we can select like a different color, let's say green, and we can paint like green colors here on top of the character. Now, why is this technique useful? Well, imagine we're working on a production and we want to get an idea of, of how this character would look with like different color palettes. This would be a really, really cool and easy way to just like get a quick texture out of the door and, uh, and just find something that works. I'm going to sample by just dragging and selecting a color here. I'm going to sample one of those colors again. And of course, you can use your, your tablet. Let me... Move a little bit here to the tablet. And uh, we can use pan pressure and stuff to, to create like patterns and different elements and uh, effects. I'm gonna go for like a black paint, black poly paint color, kind of like to, to like uh, frame some of these elements a little bit. Nah, I don't like the black, it looks a little bit weird. Let's go with white. Now, as you can see, the subtools change color when you're doing this because um, it only is applying the color to the active subtool. So you would need to go to the other subtools and fill them as well to generate a slightly different effect. I'm going to go for a little bit of like blue color. I want to get some some blue color in a couple of parts of the character. Let's go like on this like inside elements. Something like this kind of looks like a like a war paint. I actually did this character as I was saying a couple of years ago and I did a really cool, I think I think <laughs> really cool texturing job instead of a substance uh, with like 4K textures and stuff. I'm going to blend in some of the effects right here. Uh, but you can like pretty much see why this uh, technique is really important. Now, if you don't want to be bothered by by this things changing, I'm just gonna select like a weird cream color, say color, fill object there for the horns, and then go to the eyes, and just say color fill object there for the eyes. That way, if we change colors, it's not gonna change anywhere. Now, again, there are certain techniques that we can use to to paint the character in and generate like a really really cool uh, effect pretty much everywhere. For instance, I can go for some like darker reds. And go to some of the corners here and it's automatically going to give me uh, a little bit more for of a, of a fading effect like if i i usually use the term it's going to give us a visual interest right it's going to look visually interesting in certain areas and we're going to be able to to blend in some of this uh, factors 
we can use masks to to fill certain areas. They they announced on, on one of the recent uh, Seabrush uh, uh, on the last Seabrush summit or Seabrush yeah it was Seabrush summit. They announced a a very cool uh, like thing that's gonna be happening with masks in the next update. I think that's gonna be quite handy. You're gonna be able to create like complex masks. So for instance, here I can go like orange, and then I can go like a little bit yellowish. It's gonna kind of like make it a glow a little bit. You know, you can go, you can pretty much go crazy. I'm gonna break symmetry. Let's go for green blood, and here on the scar, I'm gonna fill in the green blood effect. Now again, I want this video to be a, a reference for you guys. So in case you are doing this, you you are just gonna check the video, see how it's done, and then go in and continue working on your stuff. So this looks okay, right? Like a, like it's a very basic, uh, uh, just a poly paint example. This is what you could like design and create like really interesting things. How do we transfer this into um, into Maya? First, we need to go to or we need to export this. And the way we're gonna do this, I'm gonna clone or actually. I'm gonna merge everything, so geometry, merge visible. You can do it by separate pieces. I'm just gonna combine everything here for, for simplicity's sake. So I'm gonna go uh, subtool, merge, merge visible. And we're gonna have uh, this one right here, which has the polypaint information. This little brush right here, that's the on and off of the polypaint information. So as you can see, we get this. I'm actually gonna give it one more thing. I'm gonna go for like a dark red. I'm gonna go uh, masking, mask by cavity. I'm gonna mask all of the cavities right there. I'm gonna invert that mask. I'm gonna do a color fill object with like 20% opacity on the RGB. So color fill object, and there we go. So that's gonna give me, oh, that's actually really, really harsh. Let's go back, let's, I'm gonna uh, smooth the mask, so blur mask, and let's do a 5% intensity. Color fill object, maybe a little bit more. There we go. It's gonna give us a, a little bit of, a, of an extra dark effect. The way you can see how your poly paint is working is by going to flat color. That's the information that we're painting. It looks like a clown right now, but uh, for the for the purpose of the, of the video, it should work fine. So now that we have this and we've uh, merged this properly, I'm gonna decimate this because bringing 4.8 million points into uh, Maya is gonna kill Maya. So I need to decimate this. I'm gonna go see plugin decimation master. And the most important thing here is we need to use and keep poly paint. I'm gonna pre-process current, and while that is pre-processing, let's open Maya. And uh, once that's uh, done, once the pre-processing is done, we're gonna decimate this to like 10% or 20%. Yes, we are gonna lose a little bit of detail. Yes, we're gonna lose a little bit of uh, like poly paint uh, uh, contrast and stuff, but it's still gonna give us a really nice effect. And remember, if you wanna do things the proper way, it's definitely gonna take longer. You're gonna have to do retopology, you're gonna have to do UVs, you're gonna have to do texturing, uh, but you're gonna get a way more professional and uh, produced result. However, for concepting or for just like quick searches here or here or there, this could work perfectly, perfectly fine. Uh, well, that's finishing. Let's go here to Maya. I'm going to say file, set project, and I'm going to use the old uh, next to the light because we have some uh, lights there. There we go. Let's go back here. It's done. Well, it's reordering. It's writing the file. There we go. So C plugin, and let's decimate this at 10%. And we're going to say decimate current. As you can see, the decimation has occurred. In, you can barely tell the difference from, from the decimated one and this one. 485,000 points, it's quite a bit of points, but it's, it's there. Now we're just gonna go C plugin and we're gonna go to the export or FBX, uh, FBX export import. We're gonna change this bin to ASCII. We're gonna export the visible subtools. And one of the things that we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we export with as normals right there. And that's pretty much it. We just export this. I'm gonna have this on the uh, desktop for now called Merch Alien. And while that is uh, going on there, let's go here to uh, Maya. And uh, I'm actually gonna, what happened to my window? There we go. I'm gonna go file and we are gonna import. I wanna import uh, or just open the T or it was the, the minion render scene because I, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on the, on the lighting setup. I just wanna show you the, the actual um, way to make sure that, the, that Maya or Arnold in this case reads the material. So, okay, perfectly, it's then exported. Now we can jump back into Maya. Now, quick tip here, guys. I've been rendering, or I've been doing a lot of um, GPU rendering uh, lately. The hell is this? That's new. Oh, let's go viewport, there we go. 
I was on the on the render 2.0. Uh, if you're having issues with Arnold, one thing you can do is you can go to Arnold over here, go to utilities and do this thing called the pre-populate GPU cache. It shapes, it saves some like shaders or something on the GPU so that whenever you do your GPU render, it doesn't take as long uh, as it normally does. So now that we have this, let's uh, delete this guy. We don't need it right now. Let's delete that thing and let's import our head. So let's say file, import, let's go to the desktop and we have the merged alien right here. It's gonna be a little bit heavy because it's uh, it's 500,000 uh, points instead of zeros, which usually doubles to the amount of polygons that we are gonna have here. So it's gonna be like a million polygons. Again, Maya usually can handle a million polygons, but if you're having issues, make sure to decimate it even further. And let's see where it is. Where are you, my friend? There we go. Oh, it's really, really small. Very common when you export from, from ZBrush and Maya. Let's go here, panels, look to select, that's our render uh, option. I'm gonna bring this down to like a 10. There we go, make it bigger. And I like this scene because we have a, a nice light setup. There's a couple of lights going like everywhere. So um, we get a very like professional looking shot right here. So if I were to render this right now, we wouldn't get absolutely anything. So we need to do a couple of setups here. You of course can see the character right there, but the poly paint's not gonna be visible. However, each individual vertex has a specific color information assigned to it. And that's what we're gonna be transferring using uh, the following uh, things. So first we're gonna jump onto the um, onto the attribute editor over here, and we're gonna go to the Arnold option. And down here on the Arnold option, we're gonna turn off export reference points and we're gonna turn on export vertex colors. That's the first thing we're gonna do. Then up here, we go to the mesh, where is it? Object display, no, render stats. There we go, mesh controls. You're gonna find this thing right here, the cur current color set. This name is really important. So I'm gonna control C to copy that. And I'm gonna use that to tell Arnold to sample the, the color that's on the, on the vertices, even though we're not seeing it. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna sign a new material. Arnold, let's go for AI standard surface, very traditional material. I'm gonna increase the, the roughness a little bit. And on the color, we're gonna insert an Arnold AI color ID or sorry, it's, uh, no, it's user data, sorry, user data color. There we go. If we go to the hyper shade, it's gonna be a little bit easier to, to see what's uh, going on here. So let me show you here real quick. Go. Has a lot of materials right now because I'm reusing a scene that has a lot of things. Let's just wait for this to, to load real quick. Come on, Maya. There we go. So this is the, uh, where is the AI standard? I don't even know what number this is, 13. <laughs> this is why you need to clean your scenes. So we're gonna go to AI standard 13, there we go. And as you can see, we have this AI user data color plugged in into the base color. Here, we're gonna paste the name that I just showed you, the color set zero. You might have a different name. If you're working on other pipelines, you might get a different vertex color name, but this is the one that we need right now. And once we have this, um, it should be pretty much it. So let's uh, save real quick. We're gonna go Arnold and render. And let's see what we get. And there we go. So as you can see, the vertex color is there. Of course, the camera is horrible. So let's go to the camera, panels to select it. Let's frame our character right there. And that's it. We got our uh, poly paint here. Now the colors look wrong, and this is this has to do with the linear way in which the color or the the color correction that we normally get inside of Maya. As you can see, all of the things look a little bit washed out. And this is there was a this was a very common thing that happened back in the day when we didn't have all of this automatic like linear color mapping, and you had to do traditional stuff. So we're gonna have to do something called a gamma correction. I'm just gonna press tap and add a gamma correct node here, and we're gonna bring the color in and the base color out like this. And here we're gonna use a, we're gonna use a magic number which is uh, dot five uh, four five four dot four five four and dot four five four. This magic number brings the colors back to the original like hue and tone that we want to have, and it should look as close as possible to what we have here on Seabridge. If we go again to flat color, just the colors themselves, like the value of that yellow should match the value of this yellow. The reason why it looks very shiny um, is because of course the material might be a little bit too shiny, so we can bring the roughness up. That's gonna give us a more matted look. 
But look at the difference that we can have by showing a potential client or our lead how we think something's going to look. It's not the same to just show them a very ugly like a screenshot here, even if we take the BPR, which is technically supposed to give us some interesting shadows, we can go here to the light and just like increase the intensity a little bit. And this right here does not look half as good as this right here. And as you saw, it's just five minutes, five minutes, just export the thing. Make sure you have your color like ID set up properly, export the vertex colors. And there you go, my friends. This is it. Um, again, if this is the first time that you're seeing like ZBrush and you're seeing Polypaint, this is one of those things that you definitely want to bookmark. And uh, you can check our free, or there's not free, but the, you can check the courses in Skillshare where we do have a free promotion where you can check this, all of our videos uh, for a couple of days. Check this. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. So there you go, guys. If you want to learn C-Rush, check Skillshare, check our Epic Bundle. Uh, make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe. All of that helps. And make sure to comment. Uh, one of our commenters was the one who suggested this special uh, video explaining this process. So if there's a specific things that you are uh, curious about or you would li like me to explore other than the series that we have ongoing, such as the environment series and the little creature contest, uh, make sure to, uh, to leave a comment. Don't forget that this weekend we have our portfolio review. The submissions are open and the link is down here in the descriptions as well. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.